In the mid-1980s, a chilling crime swept across Japan, leaving a bitter taste in the mouth of its victims. Picture this, the mid-80s Japan, a time of economic boom, technological innovation, and cultural evolution. Amidst the hustle and bustle of this era, there were two key players in the confectionery industry, the candy companies Izaki Glico and Morinaga. These companies, beloved by children and adults alike, were about to become the protagonists in a real-life crime thriller that no one could have anticipated. But this isn't your average crime story. This tale is laced with a sinister sweetness. Our villain isn't a single person but an anonymous group. They called themselves the Monster with 21 Faces, a name as cryptic as it is terrifying. Just like a monster lurking in the shadows, this group remained faceless, their identities hidden behind their ominous moniker. Now you might be wondering, why would anyone target candy companies? What could be gained from causing chaos in such an innocent industry? But that's where the horror of this story lies. The monster with 21 faces didn't just want to wreak havoc, they wanted to instill fear. To turn something sweet and comforting into a weapon of terror. Their methods were ruthless, kidnapping, extortion, blackmail. They demanded large sums of money, and when their demands weren't met, they threatened to poison candies with cyanide. Imagine, a child's delight turning into a parent's worst nightmare, all because of a candy bar. Despite extensive police efforts, the identity of the monster with 21 faces remained elusive. The authorities were left scrambling, always one step behind this faceless adversary. The candy companies, once purveyors of joy, were now entangled in a web of terror, their reputation on the line. And so began a reign of terror that would baffle authorities and remain unsolved to this day. A the first taste of fear came without warning. On March 18, 1984, the darkness of the night was pierced by the sinister intentions of a group that would come to be known as the Monster with 21 Faces. The president of Izaki Glico, a major candy company, was at home with his family when this unknown group made their first strike. In a chilling move, the president was kidnapped, right from the heart of his own sanctuary. The gang didn't just want money, they had a taste for theatrics, for playing games that terrified the public and baffled the police. They demanded a staggering 1 billion yen and 100 kilograms of gold bullion. This was no petty crime, it was a daring statement, a declaration of the chaos that was about to ensue. While the police scrambled and the public watched in fear, the president of Glico was living a nightmare. But, in a surprising twist, he managed to escape. After three days in captivity, he found a moment of opportunity and took it, fleeing from the warehouse where he was being held. His escape was a small victory in what was shaping up to be a war. The president was free, but the monster with 21 faces was still out there lurking in the shadows, their identities as unknown as their next move. The police had no leads, no suspects. They were playing a game of cat and mouse, but the mouse was invisible. This first act of terror shocked Japan. It was a direct attack on a beloved institution, a candy company that had brought sweetness to many lives. But now, that sweetness was tainted with fear. The monster with 21 faces had made their first move, and it was a bold one, a terrifying one. But this was only the beginning, the first taste of a bitter saga that was about to unfold. The monster with 21 faces was not done playing their sickening game. After the initial strike, the group didn't retreat into the shadows, as many criminals would. Instead, they continued to terrorize the candy industry with a series of threats and extortion attempts. They targeted multiple companies, not just Izaki Glico and Morinaga, casting a wide net of fear across the entire confectionery sector. They demanded large sums of money, threatening to poison candies with cyanide if their demands were not met. These were not empty threats. They sent letters to the companies and to the press, revealing detailed plans and even providing samples of tainted candies. The audacity of their actions was chilling, yet they remained a ghost, a faceless monster always one step ahead of the authorities. Despite the extensive efforts of the police to catch them, they seemed to be untouchable. The authorities were always a step behind, always playing catch-up. It was as if the monster with 21 faces was mocking them, flaunting their inability to be caught. The boldness of their actions and their ability to evade capture only added to the public's fear and fascination. The entire nation was gripped with terror. Parents were afraid to buy candies for their children, and companies were living in constant fear of being the next target. The monster. 
With 21 faces, was not just a criminal group, they were a specter. A nightmare that haunted the dreams of every candy company executive and parent in Japan. Yet despite the palpable fear that gripped the nation, the monster with 21 faces remained elusive. They were like a shadow, always present but never tangible. They were a monster that hid behind a mask, a phantom that could not be caught. The fear was palpable, the danger real, yet the faceless monster remained elusive. The game took a sinister turn when the monster with 21 faces threatened the unthinkable. The saga of fear and confusion escalated dramatically when this faceless tormentor announced its most horrifying plan yet. They vowed to poison the candies produced by the companies they were targeting, Izaki Glico and Morinaga, with cyanide, an extremely potent and deadly poison. The thought of such a terrifying act sent shockwaves through the nation. Imagine the sheer panic that swept across Japan. Parents were terrified for their children's safety, suddenly viewing every sweet treat with suspicion and dread. The joy and innocence associated with these candies were replaced with a chilling sense of danger. Every bite could potentially be a deadly one. The candy companies already reeling from the threats and extortion found themselves in an unthinkable situation. Their products, once symbols of joy and indulgence were now feared as potential carriers of death. Sales plummeted as consumers shunned their products. The companies scrambled to reassure the public, but the damage had already been done. This threat also brought a new level of urgency to the police and authorities. The stakes had become frighteningly real. They were no longer just dealing with a case of corporate blackmail or a rogue gang seeking financial gain. They were now facing a potential public health crisis, a threat to the lives of countless innocent people. Despite their best efforts, the authorities were unable to catch the culprits. The monsters. With 21 faces continued to elude them, their identities as hidden as their motives. This added a layer of frustration and helplessness to the already tense situation. The stakes had never been higher, and still, the faceless monster remained at large. The monster, with 21 faces had turned a game of cat and mouse into a terrifying spectacle, their threats hanging like a dark cloud over Japan, the fear, the uncertainty, the danger, it was all intensifying, and yet, the end was nowhere in sight. Despite the best efforts of the authorities, the monster with 21 faces slipped away into the shadows. These spectral figures who had wreaked havoc on Japan's candy industry seemed to vanish as quickly and mysteriously as they had appeared. The police, despite their extensive efforts, were left grasping at straws. Detectives, investigators, and even private citizens were mobilized in a nationwide manhunt. Roadblocks were set up, houses were searched, and thousands of police hours were dedicated to the case. The authorities were relentless, working around the clock, following every lead no matter how minor or insignificant it seemed. Despite their tireless efforts, the trail went cold. The monster, with 21 faces was as elusive as a wisp of smoke, slipping through the fingers of law enforcement leaving no trace behind. The last communication from the group was as chilling as their crimes. In August of 1985, a final message was sent to the media. It read, We forgive Glyco and Morinaga. After that, silence. The monster with 21 faces was never heard from again. Their sudden disappearance from the public eye only added to the enigma surrounding their identity and motives. As the years rolled on, the case grew colder. The statute of limitations for the kidnapping and the attempted poisoning expired in 1995 and 2000, respectively. With no new leads, the case was eventually shelved, left to gather dust in the archives of unsolved mysteries. Yet, the specter of the monster with 21 faces still lingers. Their deeds, their audacity, and their inexplicable disappearance continue to baffle and captivate. The unanswered questions they left behind serve as a chilling reminder of the case's unresolved status. And so, the case of the monster with 21 faces remains one of Japan's most chilling and unsolved mysteries.